Looking for information about Stelfanta? You have come to the right place. In this video, I am going to tell you seven things that you need to know about Stelfanta. Let's do it, let's break it down. Dr. Sue Cancervet, and I am so excited. Can you feel my energy? It's finally here. Stelfanta is finally going to be available in the United States. So I want to tell you seven things that you need to know about it. This is something I've been waiting for. In November of 2019, I had the opportunity to go to Australia and see Tignol Tigley. If you want to learn more about QBiotics, the company that developed this, it comes from the rainforest in the north east part of Australia and some of the cases that I treated in Australia, I'll put links to those vlogs. So let's talk about what it is, you know, when will it be available, what it's going to be like. Let's dive in. Let's break it down. Let's start with number one. Number one, what is Stelfanta and what can we use it for? So Stelfanta is not a chemotherapy. It is actually an anti-tumor agent. Like I mentioned, it comes from the blushwood plant, from the seed of the blushwood plant, which is grown in the rainforest in Australia. It is FDA approved for non-metastatic skin, cutaneous mast cell tumors anywhere over the dog's body. And for subcutaneous mast cell tumors, also non-metastatic, they must be distal or below the elbow or the hock, which is also the ankle of dogs. They must be accessible to intratumoral locations. So as I'll talk about in number two, it is injected directly into the mast cell tumor instead of surgery. So it's in lieu of surgery. Um, and the other requirement is the tumor must be smaller than 10 cubic centimeters. So how do we figure that out? So to figure out that tumor volume, it's going to be length times width times height times a half. So, you know, if your dog has a really big mast cell tumor, it's unlikely going to be a candidate for Stelfanta. So again, it must be smaller than 10 cubic centimeters. Number two, how is Delfanta given? So I've already given that away in number one. It is an intratumoral treatment. So we inject Delfanta directly into the mast cell tumor. So the reason that this is very palatable to many owners is it doesn't require surgery and there will be no anesthesia and most dogs won't require sedation. I just did an update on mast cell tumors. So if your dog didn't need sedation for an aspirin, which is how we will confirm mast cell tumors, which I talk about in the last vlogs, it's unlikely that it's going to need sedation when it gets its intratumoral Stelfanta treatment. What can I expect if I am a veterinarian and I'm treating with Stelfanta or if I'm a pet owner and I choose to have my dog treated and they're a candidate for Stelfanta? And this is the most important part because Stelfanta is very different. You know, when your dog has surgery, they're going to have the mass removed and they're going to come home with an incision. And in general, their sutures are going to be removed 10 to 14 days after surgery. And so Stelfanta causes a oncolysis, so it lyses the cancer cells and it brings in an inflammatory reaction. And there's four parts to the treatment and they're really important that you as a pet owner and the veterinarian, you know, anticipate and understand and that before you decide to say, yeah, I'm just gonna have Stelfanta for my pet's treatment. So the first part of the treatment are what we call the concomitant medications. So all dogs that are going to get Stelfanta are going to be on steroids for at least two days before treatment. They can be on prednisone, which is the corticosteroid that we typically use before that, but they need to be on their steroids for two days before getting their Stelfanta treatment. If you have a dog that their tumor is a little bit bigger than the 10 cubic centimeters, we could try shrinking it with steroids. And that's actually what I'm doing with one of my patients right now, whose tumor is a little bit big, will be a perfect candidate as I'll talk about because of location. So we're trying to shrink it with steroids. So concomitant medications, steroids are the first one. 
The second one are what we call H1 and H2 blockers. And so that's usually going to be Benadryl, which is an antihistamine, and then usually something like Pepsid. And so those are the three medications. The H1 and the H2 blockers start on the day of Stelfanta treatment for about seven days, and the corticosteroids are about 10 days. So that's the first part of treatment, which is the concomitant medications. The second part of treatment is going to be the Stelfanta treatment, and your veterinarian will um, be drawing it up based on the tumor size. So a bigger tumor gets more Stelfanta than a smaller tumor. So it is the dose is based on that. Um, and there is a maximum volume or maximum amount or dose that a dog can get. So again, that's why there is the size limitation. Part three, or the third part of treatment, is going to be that tumor breakdown. So I talked about how um, Stelfanta or Tignal Tiglate um, causes this breakdown. And within the first part of treatment, there is going to be this oncolysis and this profound inflammatory reaction where different inflammatory cells, such as neutrophils and macrophages, come in and they cause this inflammatory reaction. And usually, about day four, there is going to be this defect. There is going to be a wound that causes where the tumor used to be. And it's really important if you're thinking about Stelfanta for your pet, we're gonna put links below and I wanna put, we're gonna have it on the screen right here as well, that you go to the Verback page, you go to the Stelfanta page and you look at the different cases. Some of them are the cases that I treated when I was in Australia, but you need to see that your pet is going to have an open wound or your patient is going to have an open wound where their mast cell tumor used to be. That is part of the process. And what's really interesting and part four is this wound healing is that it will heal on its own by something we called second intention. So there will be a scar that comes in. And what's really important and very different than a lot of the ways that we deal with wounds in veterinary medicine is that most dogs in the clinical trials in Australia don't need bandages. They don't need antibiotics. And actually it's okay if the dog licks at that open wound, which you know normally we would say, don't let your dog lick at the incision, look at, lick at the wound. They've learned that it's recommended to keep them uncovered in most cases. So again, those are going to be the four parts of treatment. And I want you to learn more by going to the Verback page and looking at the pictures of the different patients. Most of these wounds, as we'll talk about, will, or most of the patients will be healed and will have complete responses by day 28. So results are great efficacy that they saw in the studies, but just different than how we think about managing tumors. And I want you to know what to expect. So those are the four stages. Please go to the website and walk through the different cases and look at the information that Verbeck has provided on their website. Number four, what are the side effects? What are, they're often called the adverse events from Stelfanta. Actually, most of the adverse effects, the side effects, are actually related to the treatment. Wound formation. We want that wound to cause. We want, you know, to kill those cancer cells. So that is one of the side effects, but again, it is part of the reaction to uh, the Stelfanta treatment. There will often be localized swelling, redness or erythema, and bruising at the tumor site. Um, at the, the clinician, the veterinarian's discretion, the patients can go on pain medication. So for like the leg ones, one of the dogs that I treated in Australia was Evie. She's in one of my Australia vlogs. Um, she's a guiding eyes dog. And so she did go on some pain medications because there can be some swelling and you can see some profound swelling. They can't go on non-steroidal anti-inflammatories because they're on steroids, but there are other pain medications that your veterinarian or your oncologist can prescribe. There can be pain at the treatment site um, and there can be lameness if it was, the tumor was on a leg as I talked about like Evie, that beautiful yellow Labrador that I treated in Australia. Um, sometimes there'll be regional lymph node enlargement. So if we're treating a muzzle tumor, their lymph node that drains the head and neck area can get enlarged because there's an inflammatory reaction. There's an immune reaction going on. Same thing if you're treating a leg one we're not surprised if the lymph nodes in that area get enlarged because again, there's an immune reaction as there's an inflammatory reaction. 
What we saw in the clinical trials is that 74 of the 80 dogs, or about 92%, the wounds healed rapidly from day seven. And again, 75% of the dogs will have complete response. I'll talk about that as we come up by day 28. Other side effects are usually due to those concomitant meds. So steroids, and I do have another whole, I think I have two vlogs just on steroids. Um, they cause increased urination, increased drinking, increased appetite. They can cause panting in some dogs as well. So those side effects were reported in the study, but again, they're usually due to those concomitant medications. Corticosteroids, prednisone are notorious for causing those side effects. And then there can be this degranulation. So mast cell tumors, as I talk about in some of my other mast cell tumor vlogs, they contain little granules, little packages, little packets of other substances like histamine. That's why these dogs are on antihistamines. Um, heparin, which is a blood thinner, and other cytokines and inflammatory mediators. And when these, when you kill these cancer cells, um, they get released. Also, the reason that your dog's mast cell tumor before it got removed can get bigger and smaller. These um, granules contain these inflammatory substances. And so if there's degranulation after the Stelfanta injection, sometimes we see side effects related to the degranulation. They could be systemic um, symptoms, so vomiting, diarrhea, your dog may be lethargic, more tired, tired than normal, and also we can see changes in appetite. Other side effects that we see can be altered breathing um, and changes in respiratory rate. That I mentioned that for steroids, but that also can be associated with degranulation. Sometimes we'll see bruising and edema. Um, that can be at the site. I mentioned that could be from the Stelfanta, but sometimes we see that from the degranulation. I mentioned histamine, I'm sorry, heparin, which is a blood thinner, can cause that bruising because it, it causes bleeding. And sometimes we'll see increased heart rate and low blood pressure. So those are some signs of degranulation um, that can be associated with using Stelfanta as well. But the take home message for the side effects or the adverse events for, from Stelfanta is that they're usually related to the Stelfanta treatment themselves. And as I'll talk about in the next section, uh, we're going to talk about efficacy. 75% um, will have complete response by day 28. And that leads me in to number five. So how effective is Stelfanta? And that's a great question because this is a different type of treatment. Typically we talk about surgically removing mast cell tumors in attempt to get those clean and wide margins to prevent them from growing back and recurrence can definitely be an issue, especially in certain locations, right? We talk about down on the legs, the face um, can be very challenging locations to get those clean and wide margins and prevent recurrence. So let's talk about how effective Stelfanta was in the studies. 75% of the dogs had complete response after one treatment. If the dogs did not have a complete response at day 28, four weeks later, they were eligible to have a second Stelfanta injection. When they looked at the dogs that either had one treatment or two treat two treatments, 87% um, of the dogs had a complete response um, when you, they looked at those two groups together. How long did it last? How durable was that response? That just grow back in a couple of months? Good news there as well. 89% of the dogs were still disease free at 12 months, so a year later. So those are really good results. The efficacy is high and it is a good alternative option. So that is what leads me into number six. Should every dog just get a Stelfanta treatment? And the answer is no. You know, and I, that's why I'm doing this vlog is I want you to know who should be getting Stelfanta. So we talked about the size limitation. So again, if your dog has a five by five by three centimeter, you know, mast cell tumor, it's going to be too big. You can just do the math right there. Again, if it's a little bit close to the border, we can try to shrink it maybe with some steroids or maybe even some chemo beforehand. But if you have a very big tumor, it's not gonna likely be a good candidate. Surgery is still, you know, the treatment of choice. If I have a dog that has a mast cell tumor that's easily surgically removable over the trunk of the body, I think surgery has shown to be the treatment of choice. I get my biopsy back, 
But if I have a challenging location, so the ends of the legs, the paw, I just saw a dog the other day, Chelsea, um, and her mast cell tumor is over the dorsal of her paw. And that's a really challenging location. The surgeon said, I'm not gonna get that deep margin that we need. Face, muzzle, one of the dogs that I treated in Australia, she was actually on her fourth Stelfanta treatment for her fourth mast cell tumor, um, was on her ear, and that would require what we call a panectomy. So for sweet Mariah, dad was like, absolutely, like doing surgery was not even on the table for him. For him, it was, it wasn't called Stelfanta yet, it was called Tignal Tiglate, but he wanted a TT injection. So, you know, ears, tail, tail base. Um, some of, one of the other dogs that I didn't treat, but I got to see, I think she was about two weeks post-treatment, had one near her vulva. So again, very challenging locations to do surgery. What would be another reason that you might consider Stalfanta? Does your dog have anesthesia concerns? You know, some of the brachycephalic breeds. One of the other dogs that is considering Stalfanta is the dog has severe heart disease and the owners don't want to put the dog under anesthesia and the cardiologist has concerns as well. So, you know, talk to your veterinarian, talk to your cancer specialist, but there's definitely a place for Stelfanta. And, you know, these are some of the reasons that you would potentially consider Stelfanta. Number seven, how do I get Stelfanta? How do I get my dog treated for Stelfanta? First of all, I hope you went to the website. I hope you looked at some of the stories, some of the other patients that were treated in Australia, because I want you to know what to expect. Talk to your veterinarian or talk to a cancer specialist. Remember, this is for non-metastatic cutaneous mast cell tumors and non-metastatic subcutaneous mast cell tumors distal below the elbow or the hock. If you think that your dog is a good candidate for Stelfanta, when can you get it? Oncologists will have it in February of 2021. Thank goodness it's 2021. So if you're watching it after, call your oncologist and see if they have it and if they're treating with Stelfanta. And then this will be something that will be available to all general practitioners um, and it will be shipping sometime in March of 2021. So call your veterinarian and ask them if they're treating with Stelfanta. I hope that they will be. I'm so excited that this is, you know, an option that we now have for it's an alternative option. And again, we've talked about some of the cases that I think it's going to be great for. Um, this is something new. This is something different. I loved my trip to Australia. It was such an honor and a privilege to get to go there. And I'm grateful for that. But one of the things that I really took away, not only did I get to treat those four different dogs, Mariah, the one with the ear, Evie, the guide dog that had one down on her leg, and Sally and Mariah, so Sally was a little Jack Russell Terrier, both Mariah and Sally had had previous mast cell tumors that were successfully treated with Tignal, Tiglate, or Stelfanta. And when their dog had new mast cell tumors, their excitement and willingness to say that, I mean, that was the way that they wanted to treat their dog's next mast cell tumor. Sally's mom knew she couldn't wait for the defect. You know, when we saw the dog on day one after the treatment and day two after the treatment, she was like, I hope that the defect happens. I hope the wound happens because she knew that that meant that Stelfanta, Tignal, Tiglate was working. And I also got to see a range of patients that were a couple of days after treatment, a week, two weeks, three weeks after treatment, and they would all sit in the waiting room and talk to each other. And they're satisfied satisfaction with the process. They didn't mind the open wounds. They, they were so happy with the process and the wound healing and the responses. And then I got to meet dogs that, you know, were months after their treatment. And again, that's what got me even more excited was the owner satisfaction with, with Tignal Tiglate, with Stelfanta. So if you're interested, again, I hope that this video was helpful. Please go check out the Verback website. It is full of good information, the pictures, the explanations. You know, mast cell tumors are a confusing tumor. I talk about that all the time. 
please watch the last two vlogs. I think they're 128 and 129, which is my updates on mast cell tumor. I always say they're not a one size fits all tumor. Talk to a cancer specialist if you have more questions. There is hope, there's reason to be excited, and I'm so happy that Stelfanta is available. And I'm thankful that QBiotics developed this and that Verbeck is, you know, is getting this distributed in Europe and in the US and other countries available as well. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe. If you know somebody who needs this information, share it with them. This is an exciting time in the world of oncology. Stay healthy, stay well, and I'll see you back at the next vlog.